coming up next on Business Minds Coffee Chat. What am I doing and projecting to the world that little girls think it's not possible for them to achieve success or surpass what I have done? They can't equal what I've done or surpass it. What am I doing? That is a massive disservice to the world because of the representative I was putting out. Everything was perfect and great and everything was so easy. And, you know, I, I would just blink and everything would just happen. And that little girl woke me up because I said, gosh, if little girls are watching me thinking that they can't achieve success because of what I'm projecting, I'm doing something really backwards. Hey guys, it's Jay, and I've got a question for you. Have you ever wondered how I have this much energy and this much fun when I record Business Minds Coffee Chat? Well, part of it is the incredible guests we bring on, but the other part is how much I focus on high performance, both in terms of getting to the gym every morning and also how I fuel my body and my brain. You see, before I record any episode of this podcast or do any work that requires my total focus, when I need to perform at my best... I have a secret weapon that makes me feel like my best self. It's called Ambitious Edge. Edge is a nootropic drink mix that comes in two amazing and delicious flavors, berry and tropical. You just take one scoop, mix it in water, and then the magic starts to happen. Brain fog? Gone. Distractions? They've run away. Energy? Your tank is filled. And don't worry, it's 100% natural. And if you know me, you know how important that is. There's zero grams of sugar, so you won't crash, and it's jam-packed with ingredients that make your mind stronger day after day. And of course, as a listener of Business Minds Coffee Chat, I have totally got you guys hooked up. So when you go to ambitious.com and order Edge today, you're going to get $10 off your order when you use the promo code coffee chat. If you're ready to have the energy, the focus, and the drive you need to accomplish all of your goals and ambitions, just head to ambitious.com and use the promo code coffee chat to save $10 today. Having a strong online presence and engaging content that maximizes your brand's message and delivers results is a must-have today. With so many so-called web designers flooding the market, it's important to work with someone who truly has the knowledge and experience, is a trusted partner, who puts customers first, understands their business, and has a history of proven results. I trust my web development and maintenance to Chenzo Does Web. From web development to digital marketing content creation to SEO optimization, Chenzo does it all. When you're ready to level up your digital marketing strategy and grow your business, visit ChenzoWeb.com. He does web so you can do you. Hey guys, this is Dominique Murphy and you are listening to Business Minds Coffee Chat with the one and only Jay Shear. Jay. Jay Shear. Jay Shear. Jay Shear. Jay Shear. Shear. Business consultant. Jay Shear. Jay Shear. Business consulting. Hi, everybody. I'm Jay Shear with Jay Shear Business Consulting. We build solid foundations for service based businesses to grow and scale and achieve the results and success they deserve. And you've joined Business Minds Coffee Chat. Napoleon Hill said, If you give up before your goal has been reached, you are a quitter. A quitter never wins, and a winner never quits. Well, on today's episode, we talk about going after your dreams and never giving up, exposing ourselves to our deepest fears, gaining confidence and finding your voice, building a brand and story, and more. Our guest is a wife and mother of two, a three-time Emmy Award-winning TV personality who landed her first TV show at age 14. She's an international best-selling author, an influential speaker, entrepreneur, spokesmodel, and was crowned Mrs. Virginia American 2020. She's been featured on The Steve Harvey Show, Fox, ABC, NBC, CBS, and countless radio, print, and local TV platforms. Please welcome the founder and president of Media Mastery Now and a woman who lives the mantra, attitude is everything, Dominique Murphy. 
Dominique. It is so great to see you. Thank you very much for being here today. Jay, I'll, I'll pay you for that intro when we finish. My goodness, it is such an honor to be here with you. I'm, I'm so privileged. Thank you for the opportunity. Well, thank you. And I'm, I'm grateful for you. And I'm just, I'm thrilled about us having some time today and creating this space to have this kind of conversation. So let's jump right in. I thought a, a starting point for us could be for you to share with us a few words to describe yourself. Oh, that's great, right? So oftentimes when we ask people to describe themselves, they they list things off of a resume. So I'm gonna not do that. Who is Dominique really? I am a student. I like to define myself as a lifelong learner. I am a thirsty learner. I love to soak up knowledge. I've always said I'll never have it all figured out and I pray to God, but if I see age 80 or beyond, that I'm still learning every single day. When I was pregnant, Jay, with my first child, I was at a grocery store and this woman came up to me, a complete stranger, and she said, congratulations. I said, thank you. And she looked at me and it was the strangest yet softest look. And she said, your child will become your greatest teacher. And I smiled and I said, uh, okay. I didn't really know what that meant. And fast forward a year after he was born, I was like, that woman was right. So as students, our teachers come in all walks of life, all sizes and ages and mindsets. And for me, my children have been my greatest teacher, bar none, but I have so many mentors out there. I'm always learning, whether the person is younger than me, older than me, you name it, I'm always learning. So I define myself as a student. I, I love that. That's, that's such a, a great word to describe you and also to apply that to our children being such incredible teachers, right? And us as, as parents and those in the community to always be open to, to learning no matter where the opportunities come from, no matter where the lessons come from always soak in the knowledge. Always. So I think that's that's fantastic. So I'm I'm curious if we were to to go back in time, I'd love to hear from you some of the experiences that you had in your youth that shaped who you are today and the type of work that you do today. Oh, that's a great question. How deep should we go? <laughs> Well, let's, think, let's go deep enough where it gives us some context because you've got a, you've got a great story that is, is, it's a deep story, right? And we're going to unpack some of that, but I really want you to highlight some of those things from your youth that really do point to who you are today, what shaped you, some of the conversations you had, and you talked about mentors. We're going to talk a bit more about that in the conversation, but I'm going to let you go and let's see what we come up with. I love it. So who was little Dominique? Well, gosh, I was, if we're, and I love that this is so transparent, Jay, I love what you, what you produce. Little Dominique was a, a young girl who was scared to death of rejection. Little Dominique was somebody who was very fake. And I speak about this often. I was what you would call the representative. I would become something that was not me because I thought it would make me more likable, more lovable, more whatever. So I became something that was not who I am today. And I remember simple questions like, tell me what is your favorite food? I would not be able to answer that because I was so used to picking the food that you wanted to eat. And I'm like, well, let's go get whatever you want. You like, you like Mexican? Great. So do I. And I lost my voice in the process. So Dominique was somebody as a young girl who was trying to find herself, but out of fear became something that she thought other people wanted her to be. And over the years, this continued until I met somebody much younger than me going back to our student teacher scenario off the top who woke me up 
And I'm happy to share the story with the audience here today. So I was working in television, been in TV, as you mentioned, for for many years. And I love speaking to young girls. So I went to a, a group. It was a, a young girls uh, event. There were probably about 20 girls at this event, ages five to about 14. And one of the girls there, she was about 12. She looked at me and she said, we want to play a game. I said, okay, let's play a game. Now I'm expecting something like Red Rover or Tag or I don't know, something like that, something we've all heard of to come out of her mouth. And she says, we wanna play, what do we see when we look at you? I said, huh? She goes, we wanna play, what do we see when we look at you? I said, I've never heard of this game before. How do you play, what do we see when we look at you? She said, you're going to stand there like I was standing in front of them, like the firing squad, and we are all going to say things we see when we look at you. I said, oh, oh, okay, yeah, we can play. Now inside, I was like a cat on a hot tin roof. Like, what are they going to say about me? Is this going to be awful? And so it started off with things such as, wow, you have really white teeth. You're really pretty. It must have come really easy for you. Things like that, right? You're so nice. And as the conversation continued, everything that was coming out of these young girls' mouths was horrifying. Things such as, I could never do what you have done because of where I come from, because of my circumstances, because I'm stupid, because I'm not attractive, because, 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 because. And there were all of these excuses from these younger girls, children, as to why they could not be successful and they believed the things they were telling me and as they were going and going i was just sinking into the floor thinking what am i doing and projecting to the world that little girls think it's not possible for them to achieve success or surpass what i have done they can't equal what i've done or surpass it what am i doing that is a massive disservice to the world because of the representative I was putting out. Everything was perfect and great and everything was so easy. And, you know, I, I would just blink and everything would just happen. And that little girl woke me up because I said, gosh, if little girls are watching me thinking that they can't achieve success because of what I'm projecting, I'm doing something really backwards. So that was my wake up call, a 12 year old girl. And I said, you know what? Starting today, I'm going to be Dominique and you're either going to love it or you're not. And either way, that's OK. And as soon as I started being real with myself, which is where it starts and real with everyone around me, what I found was the opposite. People didn't dislike me. They liked me more because they were like, wow, you're so real. You're so authentic. You have had setbacks. You've had your teeth kicked in a hundred times like every entrepreneur. You've learned, you've grown. You're not this fake thing that's perfect because nobody is. And so for me, that was one of my greatest teachers, one of my greatest teachers, uh, bar none as well. Yeah. Wow. that That's remarkable. What was what was the process like for you when that switch occurred and you had that that interaction uh, with the young girls and you decided in that moment that became a catalyst for you to really show up as who you are, let your heart show? Yeah. What was the process like? Because you and I had an opportunity to have a conversation a, a little while back and we talked about the that armor that we wear. We talked about those masks that we wear showing up a certain way because we think that that's what other people need from us. So the, the process of removing all of that so you could get down to who you truly are, walk us through what some of that was like for you. Was there a challenge behind it? Was it just as simple as saying, okay, drawing a line in the sand, today is the day? I think in life, Jay, when you have a wake up call, it causes you to do one of two things, either step up or step back every single time. Either you go ah, and you succumb to it or you're like, you know what? Enough. And for me, I knew for years this wasn't right. I knew for years that I just felt like I was hiding myself. I knew for years that I wanted to express myself, but I was a, I was afraid. So when I when this little girl woke me up, I just jumped off the cliff. I'm like, let's go. I'm done. I'm done. 
And so it was just the rip the bandaid off moment for me. I was tired of being someone that I wasn't. And this even goes back into pageantry. I, I have a background in a lot of pageantry. And I remember when I was uh, younger, same thing. I had coaches and dietitians and trainers and this and this. And when I competed for Mrs. Virginia or Miss rather Virginia USA, I remember I had so many people telling me who I needed to be, what I needed to look like that. Number one, I lost so much weight. It did not look healthy. Okay. Now I did not have an eating disorder. I want to make that very clear, but I had lost so much weight that I didn't even look like myself. I was listening to how I was supposed to answer question after question. And so this was also part of that journey where I'm like, I don't even know who I am. When you're asking me, how was my day? I'm like, how do I answer this to this person? And I would have scripted answers for everything. So over the years, as this continued, I was like, I don't want to be this, this robot anymore. So it took a child to allow me to discover this. It took a child for me to say, you know what? Wow. This little girl has the mindset of an 80 year old and I love it. Why is beyond her years and there's something here. So why not now jump and do it? Because if not now, when? So it was a pretty easy transition at that point to say, you know what? It's happening now. And what I started doing, honestly, Jay, was I just started being myself. And if someone asked me a question, I would just answer it the way I actually wanted to answer it. And what I found was people were like, huh, I stopped saying yes all the time. I was a yes person. Anything you want. Yes, 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 yes. And when you become a yes person, you lose yourself because you don't have time for yourself anymore. So I got to the point of where I started drawing lines and boundaries. And I would say, hey, listen, I'm, I'm un unable to do that today. But if it was something of value, let's schedule a different time to do it. So it was protecting my time and myself. And as a result, I mean, it, it's been it's paid in dividends. You know, such a powerful point that you made around learning to say no, creating those boundaries. And for people pleasers and for those that are listening right now or watching this, we, we feel you because I'm one of those as well as I know you are, Dominique. And when you're a people pleaser and you're always saying yes, to your point, you leave no time for yourself. And it's very, very difficult to sustain that and be able to deliver your best when you're giving everything you have away and you're emptying your tank and not enabling yourself to be able to fill that so you can truly show up, create those boundaries and, and give even more. So I feel you on that one. <laughs> so what is, what's something that you believed about yourself early on that you discovered later wasn't true? Ooh, these are great questions, Jay. What was something that I thought about myself that I discovered later was not true? Um, the first thing that comes to mind is that I was at a disadvantage. So one thing I preach about today is victimhood and victim mentality, which is one thing you'll never, ever catch me talking about because there is no such thing. And I know some people are gonna say, well, yeah, there are. no, there's no such thing. In life, we create our own realities. And I truly believe that. And when you show up, truly show up, opportunities come to you. And if certain ones don't come to you, it's not because you're not good enough or talented enough or qualified enough or whatever enough. It's because something was missing. This might not be the right path for you. Maybe you weren't fully, fully prepared. There's always lessons in everything. And so for years, I used to be that person that would say, oh, it didn't happen because of this. It didn't happen because of this. And I believed it. And as I went along on my journey and I aligned with some amazing mentors who showed me their success stories. And I, I love hearing stories of individuals who have had to be rocked in their life because that's the story of most of us, right? We at some point have a wake up call, whether we come from nothing or whether we come from a broken background or whether we've lost something. Every person who's listening to me right now has lost something in their life. And so we're all connected on that front. And what I had to learn through experience was that opportunities 
are there for everybody. If you work hard, if you show up, if you are consistent, if you truly know what you represent, those are our core values. What do you stand for? What do you stand against? And you make it happen. It all starts in the mind. And so you mentioned it off the top, AIE, AIE, it's an acronym I live by and it's attitude is everything. And whether or not people believe it, our attitude literally is everything. Viktor Frankl, for everyone who is not familiar with him, please look him up. He's a Holocaust survivor. And he spoke about the mindset often. And he said the one thing that people have control over, whether or not they believe it, is what they choose to think, what they choose to believe. Now, this is an individual who, as, as I mentioned, is a Holocaust survivor. His family was taken away from him awful ending. I'm sure we can all read between the lines there. And even in these awful, awful conditions, he said he chose to feel positive. He chose to feel in the worst condition any of us could even imagine. This man decided for himself that he was going to have the right attitude moving forward. If Viktor Frankl can have a positive attitude, every single person can have a positive attitude. It all starts with us. And a lot of times we think, oh, this person did it or that person did it. And what I call that is projection. It's, it's playing small. The reason we do that is to protect ourselves. It's to justify things so that if something doesn't happen, we can say, oh, see, that's why it didn't happen. So for me, it was I had to stop playing small. I had to stop being a victim. I had to decide that my mindset was much more powerful than some hearsay, right? I'm like, what is what is the lesson here? How do I get better? A lot of people don't ask good questions. Something doesn't go their way and they shut down. The key is to open your eyes and say, okay, this didn't happen for a reason. Why? How do I get better? What am I missing? Because so often when things go wrong, people are doing this and opportunities are just going by, going by, and they can't see it because they're so stuck in victimhood and victim mentality. So the key is rising above it, deciding what it is that you're going to do, understanding that your attitude, I promise you guys, is everything. So I can choose to feel good or I can choose to feel bad. I have that choice. Jay can say something to me and I could say, oh my gosh, I can't believe he said that. And it's going to ruin the rest of my month, let alone my year, my life. And I'm going to fester on that one thing he said. Or you can say that is someone's opinion. That's their opinion. I don't believe it. I don't accept that. I don't internalize that. And your attitude, it's, it's everything. So it's a choice. And that's one thing for me I had to to shift. It was my paradigm shift, if you will, that my mindset is everything and attitude truly is everything. Wow. Amazing. My friends, I hope you are listening very closely. Turn the volume up. Make sure that you're taking notes here because pure gold was just shared with you. And I want to make sure that you are catching every piece of this, the nuance, the words that are used and how important the message is, because I could not agree with Dominique more on this point. This is an area that I've had to work on for years and continue to, right? It's a daily process, developing your mindset, staying in a positive mindset, surrounding yourself with others who can challenge you, who can motivate you, who can push you, where you can learn, where you continue to grow, right? That's what this is all about. And I'll just also share, since Dominique brought up uh, Viktor Frankl, go out and buy a copy. Matter of fact, run to buy a copy of Man's Search for Meaning. I have it sitting right over here. It is a book that I've read numerous times. I refer to it often because it is one of those that not only will it it shake you to your core, but to Dominique's point, for someone, and we all deal with adversity, but for someone to go through such horrific events and be able to look at things with a different set of of optics, right? Getting a different perspective on things. And he studied, he studied the human behavior. He studied these individuals in these concentration camps. And he could tell the ones that gave up, the ones that had no hope and mindset and attitude are everything. 
So thank you, Dominique, for, for sharing that as eloquently as you did. Greatly oh, appreciated. Thank you, so Jack. I would love for you to talk about mentors and mentorship. It's come up a couple of times already in this conversation. Share with us how important mentors have been in your life and who are some of your mentors that have just created such impact for you in both your personal and your professional life? Oh, I love this question. Mentors are everything. If you don't have one, get one, two, three, four, five, 25, as many as you can, like just, just collect them like candy. Okay. Like you want mentors in your corner. And a lot, there's this misnomer out there, Jay, that, oh, I'm a certain age, so I can't have a mentor. It's for college kids or people in their twenties or thirties. That is not true. You can be 99 and have mentors and they don't have to be older than you. They can be younger than you. It doesn't matter. You should have mentors in every facet of your life. So if, if you are an entrepreneur, you don't only have to have entrepreneur mentors. You could have mentors that are relationship mentors. You could have mentors that are financial mentors. You could have mentors that are familial um, mentors, right? There's so many different pockets. So don't pigeonhole yourself. The key to finding a mentor is finding somebody who has done what you are looking to do. Oftentimes, as we start this journey, we're seeking advice and knowledge from people who've never done it and who've never walked the walk, right? There's this, there's this old like proverb where you wouldn't go to a bar and ask someone sitting next to you who clearly is losing his last dollar on some whiskey. Hey, how do you become a successful entrepreneur and generate a lot of income? That's probably not the right person to give you that advice because it may not be as accurate or sound as it should be, right? Now I could be wrong, but based on the scenario, probably not. The key is you want to seek out the people who are doing what you, what you want to do. And those are your mentors. So for me, I, I'm a very analytical person. So I made a list. I said, who would I love to align with? Who are people who are just powerhouses in my own mind? And I started making a list, lots of people, hundreds, this person, this person, this person, this person. And when you make a list for mentors, you have to ask yourself why? Why do they resonate with you? And I always recommend learning their stories. Mm -hmm. And so when I made a list, I decided not only did I want them to be my mentors, I was going to fly to all of them. They didn't know me. None of them knew my name. I was like, I'm going to find these people. I'm going to figure out a way to get them to say yes. I'm going to fly to all of them. I'm going to go in their house and I'm going to spend half a day with them. And everyone said, <laughs> Really? Good luck. Everyone said that. They said, you're going to wait. What? Who's on this list? And I said, I, and I showed the list. I said, this is my list. And these are the people that I'm going to, I'm going to have lunch with them and I'm going to be in their house for half a day. And no one believed it could happen. Now this goes back to the last point we were talking about, which is belief. I don't care if your boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, husband, mom, dad, brother, sister, kids, dog, cat, don't believe in you. If you believe in yourself, that is the only thing that matters. And I'll say it again, like nothing else matters than self-belief because oftentimes we're looking for validation. Oh, well, if he says that it will happen, then okay, I can go for it. If she says it will happen, then I'll, I'll, I'll apply. I'll, I'll put myself out there. It doesn't start there. It starts from within. Do you believe you can do it? Or do you not believe that you can do it? And before I finish telling the story of the mentors, Jay, I want to tell your audience about my affirmation. So I have two affirmations that I live by and they are on the bathroom mirror of my, of my, of my home. I look at them every morning and every night and they're on bright pink index cards. I wrote them 15 years ago. And every time I move, I peel them off and I stick them on the bathroom mirror. And one is a quote by Charles Kettering, and it goes, act as though it were impossible to fail. And I look at that as a mantra of mine in life because so often we're so afraid of failing. We're afraid of judgment. We're afraid of criticism. We're so afraid that it stops us in our tracks. But the reality is most people are also afraid of the same things. So in reality, people aren't thinking about you. They're thinking about their own insecurities. So act as though it were impossible to fail. If, if you could not fail, like if you could not fail, what would you do today? 
What would you change about what you could do, what you will do? Today, it would change exponentially because you wouldn't be afraid of failure, criticism, judgment, et cetera. So that's the first one. The second one just says, why not you? And every day I ask myself, I said, why not you? Why not you? Why can't you? You're just as capable, strong, powerful as anybody else. Why not you? So what is that big dream that sets your soul on fire? I call it the it. What is the it? And then you couple it with the why. The why is the piece that drives you. So what is it and why do you care about it? And once you know what that is, ask yourself every day, why not you? And honestly, ask yourself, why not you? Stop playing small. Stop coming up with reasons why it will not or cannot happen for you and decide today, yes, I am going to achieve it. So that's that's where <laughs> and, 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 you know, and it's just one of these things that's so powerful because we often stop ourselves before the opportunities are even close. So when it comes to mentors, I said, I'm going to do this. And I didn't, didn't care what anyone said. I said, I'm just going to figure it out. And guess what happened? 17 people on my list said yes, 17. Wow. So I went and I flew and I traveled and I met with all of these people in their home. And many of them were many mentors, if you will, for the time being, but several of them became lifetime mentors. So you mentioned some names, Jeff Hoffman. He is the co-founder of Priceline.com, many other companies, music producer. He's just a powerhouse. He actually is the inventor of the kiosks that you see when you go to the airport to check in a lot quicker. So Jeff Hoffman is one of my greatest mentors in life. He's a dear, dear friend. He's a mentor. I've learned so much about him, not just about business, but life. And one of the first things he told me when we met, he said, Dominique, don't chase money, chase excellence. And that is to this day, one of my top three favorite quotes, because oftentimes people in life, whether you're an entrepreneur or not, they're focused on the money. How do I make money? How do I make money? I need money, 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 money. And it just, it just, infiltrates their soul. Like, how do I make money? As the author Earl Nightingale talks about, the only people who make money work in a mint. The rest of us have to earn money. And the way we earn money is providing products and services that are needed and useful. And so when Jeff flipped it on his head and he said, don't chase money, chase excellence, it changed the way I went about everything in my life. I say, you know, don't worry about the money. Focus on being excellent, providing an excellent product, showing up in excellence, which starts with yourself. If you are tired and depleted and broken, you are not excellent and you are your brand. Every person is their brand, whether they believe it or not. So for me, that was one of my aha moments. So Jeff Hoffman, Alec Stern, he is the co-founder of Constant Contact. He's got many other companies under his belt now, and he's also a really dear friend. Um, the mentors that I have, what I love is they are friends. I can pick up my phone and I can call them right now and they'll, they'll make time and say, hey, let's talk. What's going on? How's life? How's this? How are your kids? How's your family? And so mentors are fundamental. I can't tell you how many mistakes I have avoided by being able to lean on mentors to ask the hard questions, ask the tough questions, because they're there, they've been there and they've done it and they've seen it all. And there's nothing that they can't answer when it comes to what they've done. It's their wheelhouse. Wow. Love that. Just, <laughs> just fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for sharing two of your 25 to 50 mentors. And, and I love the fact that you made a decision. Not only did you write down who these individuals were, who you wanted to meet with, you did your due diligence, you did your research, and then you reached out. So you overcame any self-limiting beliefs, any of that, that negative self-talk that says, I can't. You said, I can and I will. Why not me? And why not now? I right. love that. And to be able, for all of us, to be able to put that same mentality, that same language into practice. Because if there's one thing that holds us back from allowing our greatness to, to come out and be able to show that to the world and tell our story authentically, it is that fear, the fear of rejection, the fear of ridicule, the fear of putting something out on social media and maybe not getting a like or, or getting negative comments. 
What matters, as you said, Dominique, is your belief in yourself. We have to value ourselves first before we can expect others to value us. Is that a fair statement? 100%. And I think at some point in this journey we call life, you just say F it. Like that was me. I was like, F it. I don't want to be where I am. I want more. So how do I do it? I put myself out there. And for everyone listening, you heard me talk about the it and the why. This is how you start this process. You figure out what is it? What is it that you want? Why do you get out of bed in the morning? Honestly, ask yourself, why do I get out of bed? If you're like, I don't know, because I have to work, because I have to make money, that's not a good answer. That means you need to figure out your it. The it is that big, audacious, hairy dream that you're like, I can't tell anybody what this is, because what will they think if I say I want to earn a million dollars a year? What if they, what will they say if I say I want to earn a million dollars a month? <gasps> what will they say if I want to earn a million dollars a day? There are people who do that and more. So what is it? I don't care if it's money. I don't care if it's relationships. I don't care if it's something in your life with your family. What is it that sets your soul on fire? It's the it. You have to define the it. And what will keep you focused on the it is your why. Why do you care? This life is very short for all of us in the grand scheme of things. So why does it matter to you? What is the reason behind it? You have to discover your why. Your why could be because you never believed in yourself and you want to prove it to yourself that it's possible. Your why could be your children, that they can see a role model, someone in their life do something amazing. Or maybe it's to show your kids that anything is possible. Your why could be your entire family. They're leaning on you and you want to show them that you can do this for them to help them. Your why might be because might be because you want to help people who look like you, who don't believe that they can do it, do it. It could be a million reasons. Maybe you're the first in your family to do something. That's the why. That's the thing when you're tired, when you're sad, when you're broken, when you don't feel like it, when you feel depleted, the why is the piece that makes you wake up and say, okay, you know what? Back on, back on. And I encourage everyone, whatever your why is, and it doesn't matter. It could be something I didn't even say on this call. Whatever the why is, take a photo of it. It could be a quote, it doesn't matter, a picture, and make it the screensaver, your lock screensaver on your phone. My why is my family. And so whenever I have days, and trust me, I have days just like everybody else, because we are all human, where I'm like, oh, I can't be bothered, I don't want to deal with this. I look at that phone, and I snap out of it like that. So figure out what the it is and then the why is the piece that will drive you every single time to not quit. Wow. Dominic, you are on fire. You truly are. I just, I, I know you're speaking from the heart. I know this is the the real you and who you are and how you show up. But you, I tell you, you, uh, you, you give me chills just listening to your words. It just resonates. And I know that there's a lot of earbuds that are listening to this right now that feel exactly the same way. And you know how it is. It's like anytime we are hungry for knowledge, knowledge that we can apply to improve ourselves, the lessons have a way of showing up the right time when we need them by the right voice. And you are that voice in this moment. And I want you to know how much I appreciate you. And I know that our audience is appreciating everything that you're saying as well. So let's talk about your zone of genius for a moment. Let's talk about finding our voice, creating personal brand. So share with our audience your zone of genius, where you spend your time from a business perspective. You own more than one business. You own multiple businesses. I know you've got a lot going on in your world, but give us some context. Share with us where you specialize. Okay. So my specialty is all things media. <laughs> I love television. I love media. I've been on TV for many years, started my career at the age of 14 and it's, it's my wheelhouse. Um, I'm honored to have earned three Emmy awards for my journalistic excellence. And in 2020, I was named the national salute to excellence award winner, one of them by the national association of black journalists. So it's a very prestigious award for journalistic excellence in, in, in the field. 
So that's my my background. I am the president and founder of America's premier media training agency. It's called Media Mastery Now. And speaking of finding your voice, there is a book on our homepage that's completely free to anybody. And you can download it. It gets sent right to your email. It's MediaMasteryNow.com. And it's a, it's a great resource for you to find your voice. Okay, it's called Speak Up, Five Simple Hacks to Find Your Voice and also land media opportunities. So if you're looking to crush it in the media space, but also figure out how to gain confidence and find your voice, it's it's a really good read for you. Very simple read, but a lot of tactical information. So with Media Mastery, we work with entrepreneurs, with business leaders and with thought leaders who are like, okay, I want to be an authority in my space. I wanna go from someone who's unknown to somebody who's unforgettable. How do I do this? So we work with these individuals to help build out their, make sure their business is right on point. But then from there, it's all about media training and exposure. So we help you essentially become your own PR agent, how to break through the system, break through the noise. What are they looking for strategically? It's all about media training, media placement, communications, confidence, things like that. Also the storyline, it is absolutely fundamental for every person, especially if you're an entrepreneur or in the business arena, to have a story. People do not buy products or apps or anything like that, contrary to popular belief. People buy people and people buy passion and people and passion are based on a story. So you have to ask yourself, if you're not scaling the way you want to in your business and in your career, scaling, if for anyone who doesn't know, means like growing. If you're not growing, scaling, the chances are three things are not in place. Number one, there's no strategy. Number two, there's no game plan. And number three, you're missing your storyline. So the, the, the philosophy that I teach on, and it's a very simple formula because media can be incredibly intimidating, incredibly frustrating and confusing. It's like being plopped into a jungle and you're like, okay, I know there's a way through, but I, do I go left, up, down? Do I climb a tree? I don't know. Is there a lion over that? Where, where do I go? And so it's confusing. So what I do is I help you quiet all the noise and make it very, very simple. It's time to rise up and record video content. Join us in Nashville, Tennessee, October 19th through the 21st for Rise and Record, the number one video marketing event of the year. If you want to discover the exact step-by-step -step blueprint to using video to grow your personal brand, sell your products and services, and make a massive impact in the world, you need to grab a ticket to Rise and Record 2022. Reserve your tickets at www.riseandrecord.com. Use promo code COFFEECHAT at checkout and get 10% off your ticket price to Rise and Record 2022. There's nothing quite like the intoxicating aroma of fresh brewed coffee. The anticipation and the way that first sip makes you feel like you have the world at your fingertips. Since 2012, 1565 Artisan Coffee has been roasting the finest 100% pure Arabica coffee. Their coffee is small batch roasted in St. Augustine, Florida to capture the essence of life there. Brave, authentic, enduring, soulful, and honest. With five signature blends to choose from, there's plenty of happiness to enjoy. From their medium dark roast cannonball with notes of brown sugar, chocolate, and toasted marshmallow, to their light roast estuary blend with notes of cocoa, dark cherry, and mild citrus. One of my favorites is their medium roast stump knocker with notes of toasted pecan, chocolate, and stone fruit. When you're ready to discover your happy place and enjoy the perfect cup of coffee that makes you smile, visit 1565coffee.com. Get 15% off your order when you use promo code COFFEECHAT at checkout. And now let's get back to the show. So the formula for media, which is also massive for anyone in the business field, visibility equals credibility which equals profitability. So visibility is being seen and it's being heard, being seen and being heard. Your number one goal, number one goal is visibility. Nothing will scale your business faster than by utilizing the power of the media to do it. 
So media is a beautiful thing, right? You do one interview, let's just say TV, because it's everybody's favorite. Let's say you do one television interview that lives forever because it gets pushed out onto a website. It now has international reach. That one story can help you generate leads and traffic, not just the minute it airs, but the week after, five years after, 15 years after it lives forever. So visibility also pushes it out, the media to a, to a really large population. So when you do it the right way strategically and you align with outlets that have your target audience, that's the key, your target audience, you are now being positioned in front of a pool of tens to hundreds of thousands of people to millions of people in one story, one 60 second story that now can really generate massive results for you. So visibility, being seen, being heard always leads to credibility. That credibility always leads to profitability. So let me give a real life example. Please. If I was to say to anyone listening, think of your favorite auto insurance company. I bet you thought of one like that. Whether you thought of Geico or Progressive or State Farm or Affleck or Farmers, it doesn't matter. You thought of a company in a split second. And I do not work for any of those. So I'm not sitting here marketing any any auto insurance company to you, yet you thought of one in a split second. Why did you think of the company you thought of? The reason is visibility. Subconsciously, we're seeing ads all day long. And the company that you thought of, maybe you currently buy from that company, potentially. Maybe you've seen their ads on the sides of billboards, on buses, heard it on the radio, seen the TV commercials, you see it in the newspaper, you're seeing it constantly. So because it's visible, you naturally thought of it as being more credible. You did. Now, if I told you guys, hey, I just started my own company, it's called Dominique's Auto Insurance. Dome's Auto, it's phenomenal, it's great. Just as good as the other guys. You'll probably say, hey, congrats, that's awesome. I'm still gonna go with the other guy, right? And it has nothing to do with me personally. You have just never heard of Dominique's Auto. That's not a company, by the way, so don't look it up. You know, you've never heard of Dominique's Auto. So you're like, I just would feel more comfortable with the company that I've seen and that I've heard. So the same is true for every business and every entrepreneur. Because you're more comfortable, you're gonna put your money there. So when you're visible, you become more credible. That's the authority we were speaking about. And when you are in authority, when you're credible, people want to buy from you. So the profitability is at the end, it always comes in. So like Jeff Hoffman said, don't focus on the money. I want you guys to focus on visibility. How can I be seen? How can I be heard? Because every single time, inevitably, it leads to money every single time. So it's about putting yourself out there, having a story, having everything in place, a strategy, which very few people have. They're just throwing spaghetti at a wall and hoping something sticks, right? There's, there's no strategy and there's no game plan. To do media the correct way, it is very, very, very strategic. We have to identify what outlets are the best outlets for you. What is your storyline? What are they looking for? And every single week it's changing. So it's like watching a, a, a chess game. You're constantly moving the pieces to position yourself for what is trending at the current time. But visibility, hands down, the number one way to scale your business. So Media Mastery Now helps as I mentioned, entrepreneurs, business leaders, and thought leaders really crush it in their space and become authorities by way of media, especially television. The other brand is called the Luxure Group. Luxure is luxury in Latin. So it's L-U-X-U-R-E group.com. So the Luxure Group.com, or you can just do Luxure Group.com. It is a global PR agency. We call ourselves PR Plus. Anything you can think of in the media is what we do. So we help bold brands, that's what we're focused on, bold brands make a massive splash in the media. So if you're looking for top level television, radio, magazines, newspapers, podcasts, that that is what we do with the Luxure Group. So I, I love media, that is my wheelhouse and whatever side of the aisle you fall on, like, hey, I want training or hey, I just want you to do it all for me, have your team do it. Luxure is growing and all the brands are growing, but Luxure has a team of 34. So you will have a lot of support and access and resources, Media Mass, we have a team of over 30 that's growing as well. Coaches support. I have an inner circle where I work with you directly and my team, my coaches work with you to help you get from A to Z in the quickest way possible. Wow.
Beautiful. So uh, to that point, if you had a, an entrepreneur, business owner who wanted to work with you, but they're not comfortable in front of a camera, you and your, your group, your team can coach, train them, help them overcome the, the fear or, or whatever it is that's blocking them so they can become more comfortable, more confident. You better believe it. Exactly. Yep. We do. We do that and more. So anything you can think of in media, whether you're level one and you're like, I am scared to death. I don't know what to say. Do I look over here? I don't know what to do with my hands, right? Like no matter where you are in this whole journey, we can help you. So yes, whether it's confidence, whether it's speaking, whether it's commanding a room, I do a whole training on how do you command a room? Because when you walk into a stage, whether you walk into a boardroom, on a stage, in the media, we call it executive presence. When you are like a peacock, when you are loud, when you can command a room, people listen more. It converts better. So yes, we help with every single piece of the puzzle when it comes to media, confidence, speaking, storytelling, you name it. Yep. Outstanding. Now, for all of you that are watching and listening right now, I have personally seen Dominique in action. I have seen her command a room from the moment that she walks in, the lights just get brighter. You can sense that there's an energy about Dominique. You're already feeling it, right? You can you can feel it in her presence and her voice, the way she articulates the words, the language, all of that. But let me tell you something. There's there's a lot that we can do virtually this way, right? There's a lot we can do with our voices. But when you are with someone, when you're in front of someone in a live one-on-one -on -one setting or in a one-to-many setting, it, Dominique, lights it up. So there is definitely talent. There's experience. There's a gift. There's so much that, that you, Dominique, have honed over the years. And I know that there's a lot that's bubbled underneath the surface there, a lot of things that you've worked on that you and I have just scratched the surface on here today. But you just keep getting better and better and better. And I, and I love that. I would encourage anyone that's listening right now, and we're going to certainly link to all of the different sites that Dominique just mentioned, but I would encourage any of you to take a look at your, your own businesses and realize that, that you, right, you're a brand, right, personal branding, but reach out, do some research, get to know Dominique and the services that she's offering and figure out how you can get closer, how you can amplify your voice, amplify your message, and take your business to a completely different level. So I love what you just shared. So what, what would surprise us at this point to learn about you? <laughs> so many things. Okay. What would surprise you to learn about me? Uh, I'll give you one. And if you don't like it, I'll give you something else. So I okay. was a competitive international figure skater for the first part of my life. So from age eight to 16, I was a individual and then synchronized figure skater. Very few people have seen synchronized ice skaters. So essentially, if you can envision synchronized swimming, but on ice, so it's a team of 25 doing wow. formations to music. And so I was on a team called Team Braemar in Minnesota, which is where I'm originally from. We were ranked number one in in, in the state of Minnesota and we were top in the USA and we consistently would go to Canada and do international competitions. So that was a big part of my life growing up. I would wake up at 5 a.m., go ice skate, go to school, leave school, go back to the ice rink until pretty late, have dinner, go to bed and repeat. So that wow. was a big chunk of my life growing up. Taught me a lot about discipline very early. <laughs> I'll bet that is impressive. Do you still find time to get on the ice? You know, this goes back to the finding your your voice. And so for me, I skating is, is, is a really interesting animal, right? It's a lot like any sport. And when you are in a sport by a certain age, there's like a cutoff, right? Like, you know, if you're going to be in the Olympics or, you know, the top comp competitions at a certain age. So for me, when I got in, I was developing my skill set abnormally fast. Mm -hmm. So I ended up getting two coaches and I was training every day. And the whole goal was, oh, we're going to get her to the Olympics. This was like the whole, like, we're going to do this. 
And there's something about other people wanting you to get to the Olympics and yourself being like, eh, right? And I was kind of that eh, type of person. And as the years went on, and it was literally my life for eight years, I, a couple of things happened. Number one, ice skaters are short. And so they encourage you to drink a lot of coffee because it stunts your growth. So I would drink coffee and all this stuff when I was little, crazy, right? Uh, but it didn't work. And so I'm pretty tall. <laughs> and so, and as you grow, your body changes. So you have to relearn all of your moves because now when you're jumping and spinning, it's you're in a different proximity, right? So you're constantly changing. So I started going through these growth spurts and I started to level out. And as I was leveling out, I was losing my love for it. And I love television and I knew this really young. I was into theater and, and TV. And then I landed the whatever show, my first show, which was an NBC show in Minneapolis at the age of 14. And I was still skating, right? And I wasn't hitting it and I, my heart wasn't in it. And I remember telling my mom, uh, gosh, I was probably, I think I was like 15 and a half, almost 16 at the time. And I said, I don't wanna do this anymore. I said, I, I don't wanna do this. And I knew Olympics weren't there, but my heart wasn't in it. And my heart was in TV and media. I said, this is what I want to do. It makes me come alive. I'm like, do you see my face? I'm like, this is where my heart is. And so I was able to identify that at a very young age. So for me, my it, that thing that made me come alive was, was television. I loved it. I loved media. So it was a natural progression for me to transition. The fun fact, people always ask, do you still ice skate? I have not been on ice skates, literally. I have not been on skates since the age of 16. No kidding. Nope. I was so done with it that I was like, I am done. I am wow. done. So I'll probably do it maybe this year or next year during the holidays with ice skates, right? Because like, you know, but competitive, I have not stepped back on the ice. Nope. <laughs> uh, I love that. I always love to learn something different and something <laughs> new about, about, uh, about someone. I think that's awesome. Well, very good. So I, why don't you provide our audience a challenge? What would you challenge us to do? And this goes for me too. Ooh, wow. That's a great question. Ooh, that's a great question. So many things are coming to mind. Okay. What would I challenge you guys to do? I would challenge everyone on this call to be kinder to themselves. Because oftentimes the things we say to ourselves in our mind, it's awful. We wouldn't let anyone else say it to us. I heard Maya Angelou speak years ago. She had come to an event that I was honored to also attend. And she shared this story about us, uh, our, uh, us as humans, right? And she said, you are like a home, like you are a vessel and think of it like a house. She said, you wouldn't let somebody come into your house and knock things over and swear at you and tell you you're stupid and ugly and fat and dumb and all this stuff. If somebody came in and started doing that, you would say, get out of my house. You're not allowed back in here ever, like be gone. And you would remove them from your house. Yet we sit here every day. And if we're all being honest with, our, with ourselves, chances are there are things that come into your mind that are negative, that are not kind about yourself. I'm stupid. I'm ugly. Oh, I'm so annoyed. Oh my gosh. I can't get things right. It's never going to happen. I'm so frustrated. I'm so dumb. Right. And if you listen to yourself during the day, I can't tell you how many people I listen to and I hear them say things like, Oh, I'm so stupid. <laughs> right. And they don't realize what they're saying. And our words are powerful beyond measure. And they are like, they're, they're so incredibly powerful. What you're saying, and especially what you're saying internally, because sometimes when you say it out loud, you might catch it. But what you're saying to yourself is having an effect on you, whether you believe it or not, whether you have mental blocks, whether you're like, why am I not being successful? It's because oftentimes, in your mind, you are preventing yourself from doing it because you're saying, I'm so stupid, I'm dumb, I'm always late, oh, I can never get things right. Whatever that thing is that you're saying constantly, and maybe it's multiple things. So I challenge you to be more aware of this and to be kinder to yourself, right? We should be loving on ourselves more, yet we are living in a culture where we have been programmed from day one to not say I'm awesome or I'm great or I love myself because, oh, that's pretentious. You can't say that you love yourself. You can't say that you're awesome. Why can't you? Why can't you? But yet we can say we're stupid and dumb and people, no one even bats an eye at that. 
we can say, oh, I'm so dumb. Oh my gosh, I'm such an idiot, right? And people could smile at you and go, <laughs> with you, right? That is a broken culture. You are amazing. You are beautiful. You are strong. You are capable. You are enough. You're not stupid. You're not broken. You're not ignorant. You're not dumb. You're not fat, right? It's, it's changing the mindset and paying more attention to that. And I'll just leave you with this, Jay, because Earl Nightingale, I quoted him earlier. I love Earl Nightingale. There's a book called The Strangest Secret. If you have not read this book, you'll read it in like a couple hours, maybe an hour. It's a super easy read. It is one of the best books, in my opinion, of all time. And Earl Nightingale talks about a farmer on a fertile piece of land. And he compares the mind, our minds, to this fertile piece of land. And there's a farmer and he's planting seeds. And the land does not care what you plant. You can plant seeds of negativity, doubt, blame, shame, justification, ugh, victimhood. You can plant that in your mind. Or you can plant seeds of positivity, of hope, of success, of love. It doesn't matter. Whatever you plant, the land is going to grow that in mass abundance, whether we believe it or not. So if you're telling yourself you're stupid and you're dumb and you're not worth, not worthy and you're this and you're that and whatever, you're going to keep feeling that way. You're going to keep failing. You're going to keep attracting negative things into your life and wondering, why does it keep happening to me? The key is your mindset. So start paying attention to what is coming into your mind every day. A lot of times we're like the hamster on a wheel, right? We're like, oh, I got to go to the grocery store. I got to pick up my kids. I got to all day long. And so it's, it's allowing yourself to say, stop, quiet the noise and be present with your mind, with your thoughts. And when those negative things come in, because they will, you have to have the mentality and, and the wherewithal to say, no, not today. Mm -mm. Not having that. I'm not having that. I'm not stupid. I'm amazing. I'm great. And I got this right. So that's what I encourage people to do is to pay more attention to what's coming into their minds and start being kinder. Start treating yourself the way you deserve to be treated. If you're sitting here in this world saying, oh, you know, the world's so tough and people have it against me and this and this and this, start treating yourself the way you would want to be treated. Because oftentimes, literally, if you find that people are negative to you and this and that, it's because you're also projecting that. You're, it's like a magnet. If you're saying I'm ugly, I'm stupid, I'm dumb. And people are like, you're not good enough. You're fired. You're this, you're this. And you're like, why is all this happening? It's because you're manifesting it. So you have to start literally using positive words, positive themes. I am great. I am amazing. I'm going to have a terrific day. If I have a bad day, that's okay. I am human, but I'm going to choose because again, it goes back to choice. I'm going to choose to think positively, not for anybody else, but for myself. Wow. All right, my friends. Challenge accepted. I want to hear all of you saying the exact same thing because it is time. It is time to change the language that we use. It's time to change the stories that we tell ourselves. It is time to start using more empowering words, more positivity in our lives. It will make a substantial difference. And I could not even come close to saying it as well as Dominique did. So thank you for that. And here is my final question to you. What is, what is one of the greatest gifts that life has given you that you didn't expect? Oh, Jay for the win again. Okay. What? Oh, Okay. Ask me that one more time. So what is one of the greatest gifts that life has given you that you didn't expect? Do you have time for a story? I have time. If you have time, please I tell. I have plenty of time for you, Jay, always. Okay. Please. There, there's so many things. Um, like I said, I miss transparency these days, but a gift that life gave me that I wasn't expecting. Okay, so this is a story you're probably not going to expect out of me. I was working in television. I was a TV host in Cleveland, Ohio, and I finished my episode the same way I did every day. I said, thanks for watching. I'm Dominique. I'll see you back here tomorrow. 
lights went off, studio lights went off. I grabbed my purse like I did every day, grabbed my phone and I was walking out of the studio and I looked down at my phone and there was a message from my executive producer and it said, meet me upstairs now. I thought, whoa, okay, not hi, no emojis, just meet me upstairs now. Now in the building that I worked in, upstairs was where all of the managers were located and also human resources. So when you get called upstairs, it's never a good thing. So I'm like, okay. So I'm making my way up the stairs, the long walk up the stairs and my mind is racing. I'm like, what did I do? What did I say? Did I say something on the air? Did, what did, what did I do? 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 And that's that, that kills again, the hamster on a wheel. What did I do? What did I do? So I walk up to the top of the stairs, I turn the corner and I walk into a conference room and my entire team is sitting in the room. So I said, okay, good. <laughs> okay, everyone's here. Everyone's like smiling. Okay, this must be someone's retirement. This is awesome. Okay, we're good. So I sit down, I'm the last one in the door. Hey everybody. And I sit down, I was the last one in, as I mentioned, because I had finished the show. And my news director was sitting directly in front of me and he was talking to the side and he looked at me and his face completely changed. And he said, Dominique, that was your last show. You are no longer the host of that show. And the whole room was like, what, what, what? And I remember I just sat there frozen. And he looked at me and he said, do you have any questions? And I said, yeah, um, can I talk to you in private? He said, yes. So we proceeded into his office and I'm, I'm beside myself at this point, literally just frozen. Cause I can't even, I can't even conceptualize what I just heard. So I sit down and I was so humiliated. I was like, oh my gosh, this happened in front of everybody. So I sit down in his office and I look at him and I ask the million dollar question. I said, do I still have a job? And he said, yes. I said, okay, what is my job? And he looked at me and he said, what do you want it to be? And I remember looking at him so confused. I was like, what I was hired for, but my assumption is that's off the table. So I, I don't, I don't know. He said, you have two options. He said, you can come back here tomorrow and be a reporter, which was a huge demotion for me. He said, or you can walk out that door and never come back either way. It's up to you just like that. And I remember I just, I just sat there just staring at him and I said, Oh, okay. Okay. Thanks. And I made my walk down the stairs and everyone by this point, it's a, it's a media room. It's a newsroom, right? Everyone's like, Oh, I heard what happened. Are you okay? You know? And I, I just proceeded to my car and I called my husband. I remember I got in and I just doubled over the steering wheel and I was bawling my eyes. I couldn't even start the ignition. I was so broken. And I was like, babe, I, I don't know what just happened. I don't know what just happened. Uh, they, uh, uh, they, they took me off the show. I said, I don't know what I did. And I was beside me. I was bawling. I was so broken, Jay. I was so broken. I'm like, what did, what did I do? What did I do? They didn't, what did I do? And my husband said, babe, come home. I said, no, 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 no. You don't, you don't, you don't understand. I said, I just, I was in a room with my whole team and they did this. And I, what did I do? And he said, babe, come home. So I made the way my way home. And I remember getting home that night and I was just between two worlds. I said, I don't know what I did. How did this happen to me? I've always been that person who's gone above and beyond. Like what, what did I do? He said, it's not about what you did. It's about what you're going to do next. He goes, now you have two options. You can do what everybody expects you to do, which is to never show your face in that room, in that office again. He said, or you can rise above it, but only you can decide that. He's like, I can't do that for you. My husband's a very wonderful, wise man. And that night I was up all night. And so it was the, a tale of two worlds, right? I was like, oh, 
yeah, I'm going to go back in there tomorrow. I, I got this. And then I'd be like, no, you don't got anything. Like, sit down. You're not going in there. There's no way. What are people saying about you? Oh my gosh, the fear of judgment and criticism, right? I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I said, there's no way. There's no way. And then I'd be up again. Yeah, I, I can do it. I, I, right? I think, I think I can do it. And then I'd be like, no, you're not doing it. There's no way. By the time the morning come, I decided, you know what, I'm going to do something that I've never done before. I've never been in this situation. I don't know what to expect, but you live once. I'll have a story out of it at least, right? So I went into work. I got up early, two hours earlier than usual, and I found a story because reporters pitch stories every day. So I walk in and I joke, I was like the rare panda at the zoo. Everyone was like, she's here oh my gosh she came back what and so i i walk into the editorial meeting and my boss goes does anybody have a story idea and my hand went up first i said i do and i pitched a story which ended up being the lead or the number one story that night so i went home and i thought okay definitely not what i want to do i'm not gonna pretend that i love this because i don't and i'm gonna be fully transparent um but i was like but there's got to be a lesson in this. And I truly believe in life. There is always a lesson if we're paying attention. So I said, what is the lesson in this? Let me keep my eyes up and open, not down. There's something here. No idea what it is. No clue. But there's got to be something here. So a day went by, a week went by, a month went by, two months went by. I remember thinking every day, like, what is the lesson in this? I don't love what I'm doing. I'm feeling kind of stuck. But I remember that attitude is everything. And I live by that. I live by that mantra. It's literally the tagline on one of my books is AIE, attitude is everything. So I'm like, okay, I have to make sure that I am coming to work with the right attitude because not for anyone else, but for myself, that is a representative of Dominique. And I choose to feel good. I choose to not be a victim. There's something here. I know there's something here. Let me just keep going, paying attention. There's something here. So three months went by and then the Republican National Convention came into town and it was my job as a reporter to go out and cover the stories. So two weeks before the event, we had to go through military SWAT training, two weeks. Things like we had to learn. So if someone throws tear gas on you, here's what you do. If somebody stabs you, here's what you do. If a bomb goes off, you need to run this way. And here, here's the whole layout of the property and what to do. And here are the alleyways. And if someone shoots from the roof, this is what you need to do. Hmm. Stuff no human ever should have to learn, right? No civilian should have to learn this stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. They must think something's going to happen. Fast forward, a couple of days before the event, I'm told that I'm going to have an armed bodyguard with me at all times by the name of Gunny. Cannot make this stuff up. Full-blown military SWAT rifle and everything next to me at all times. I am not allowed to leave his presence at any time, period. Then they go, here's your bulletproof vest and here's your bulletproof helmet. Good luck. And I remember that day thinking to myself, <laughs> whoa, what? I'm an armed bodyguard. They want me to wear a bulletproof vest and helmet. They're providing me this. They must think I'm going to get shot. There must be some kind of insider information or something that I'm going to get shot. And then my mind went to, they do not pay me enough for this, right? And I was like, what, what is going to happen? And then I kept thinking, I was like, you know what? There's a lesson. I'm scared to death. I am scared to death but there's a lesson in this. So let me just keep my eyes open and see what it is. There's gotta be something here. So I went into the protest day one, <sighs> I did not get shot. <laughs> day two, day three, day four, day five, the last day I was in the heart of the protest and this massive fight broke out literally right next to where I was standing. And the coverage got picked up all over the place. It was my coverage from that story and from the week of being in the heart of all those protests that earned me my very first Emmy award. So what wow. I perceived as one of the worst things that could have happened to me from a career standpoint, how did this happen? What, 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 how did this happen? Turned out to be one of the best things 
for me from a career standpoint, because that first Emmy opened up so many doors. It led to not only two, but three Emmys. It, it, it led to a national salute to excellence award. It led to me getting tons of media opportunities. I've been on TV thousands of times. It has led to I, the, my next job after Cleveland, when all that ended, I became the number one news anchor at the number one station where I was working. Okay. So all of a sudden it started to just, to just, to snowball. And what I thought was a negative ended up being a massive positive because in life, a lot of times we find ourselves complacent. There was a Gallup poll that came out recently that said 93% of people are disengaged in life, in work and in life. We're just going through the motions. And that was me. I was working as a host, but I would literally on my lunch break, I would go outside and walk the parking lot because I was bored out of my mind. I'm like, well, let me go, go walk and get some fresh air. And I was like, what am I doing now? I was scared. I never would have jumped. I needed to be pushed. And a lot of times in life, it's like you're on Broadway. If you can envision a stage and the curtains are closed and you're on Broadway and you're like, I can't go through the curtains. I'm not ready. I, I can't do it. Uh, uh, uh. And then someone pushes you through and you get out there and there's a huge audience and you're like, oh, it's showtime. And that is what happened in my case. I was pushed through a curtain and realized, OK, let's now deliver. And it ended up working in a really beautiful way. And so the lesson for that, it, for, I kept saying, what was the lesson? What was the lesson? The lesson for me and for anyone out there, a closed door is never ever closed unless you say it is closed. There are so many ways around it. You can, you can climb over a door. You can crawl under a door. You can walk around a door. You can kick a door down. A door is never closed ever unless you say it is closed and own it. And so that was the lesson for me that sometimes what we think is one of the worst things that could happen to us, the negatives, what's the lesson you're not seeing it. It's not happening fast enough could be one of the greatest lessons in your life. But the way the story ends was for years, I was still in victim mentality. I can't believe he did this to me, that news director. I can't believe he did that. He humiliated me. He did this. He did this. And it took three years for me to wake up and say, you know what, that man, although I didn't agree with the way it was delivered initially, never will. I said, he gave me one of the greatest gifts of my life because had he not done that, this never would have happened. I wouldn't be where I am right now, had he not done that. So I wrote him a handwritten card and I said, dear so-and-so, I said, thank you for what you did. At the time I did not appreciate it. I didn't understand it. I had no idea why still don't know why to this day. Right. I said, cause there was never a reason. It wasn't like you messed up on air or you, you said something negative, nothing. They just decided to make a change. So no real reason. That's why it's a crazy story. I said, I want to thank you for what you did because had you not done that, I would still be where I was walking the parking lot during lunch, wondering what life could be like if I would jump, but I knew I never was going to jump. And so he actually wrote me back and he said, wow, you have me in tears right now. I never thought I'd ever hear from you again. I never thought I'd get a message like this, but your words mean so much to me. And so that is a story of something that I did not expect. I did not expect that massive demotion. I did not expect to be in that position that long. I did not expect it to turn out to be an Emmy win and skyrocket my career. I had no idea, but the key was two things, attitude, Keep your attitude right, not for anybody else, but for yourself. And number two, always keep your eyes up. When you feel sad, you feel broken, you want to look down, you want to say, poor me, that in that time more than ever, more than ever, you have to be looking up and say, what is the lesson here? What is the lesson here? It took me over three months, three months of every day being like, what am I doing? Keep your attitude right. What are you, what am I doing? Keep your attitude right. So when things feel bad, I encourage you to not look down, but rather look way up and say, okay, I know there's more for me. I know something great is coming out of this, whether it's a day, a week, a year, five years, something is great and it's coming your way if your attitude is right and if you're paying attention. Wow. So <laughs> I, I tell you, I'm almost speechless 
but I'm not going to be because I'm a host here, right? So I have to maintain my, my composure, my professionalism. But let me tell you something, and this goes for everybody that is listening right now. If this, if Dominique's story, if her words, if the stories that she's been sharing, her, her excellence, her attitude, her mindset, if that hasn't inspired you to jump and take action, I would go back and re-listen to this over and over and over again, because I could tell you, I feel like I could, as soon as we wrap this up, I could go out there and do anything. So don't only listen, listening is important, right? That's critically important, but act, apply the information, apply the knowledge that's been shared here, connect, understand, get become part of Dominique's world, get to know who she is. You, you've heard a, a, enough here that hopefully attracts you and wants you to learn more. So we will definitely share links. Dominique, I, I just, I want you to know how grateful I am. You, you've opened your heart. I feel you. I know you. And I, I just want you to know how much I appreciate it. Thank you for sharing of your, your knowledge, of your experience. Thank you for sharing your stories. Thank you for bringing your voice and your authority and your courage and your wisdom to Business Minds Coffee Chat. Jay, you're a superhuman. I just want to spotlight you. You are a person who's always spotlighting everybody else, but it's, it's nice to be spotlit as well. And you have created such a beautiful space and platform. And I know your audience is just so grateful that you have created, you have curated something that's changing lives. And I don't know if you realize the power of what you're doing, because oftentimes we're in the motion. We don't necessarily think of the impact that we're having in, in, in people's lives around the world. And that's what you're doing. You're creating a space where people who are like, I'm struggling, I'm trying to figure this out because most people are. And anyone who tells you they don't struggle is, is lying. So to create a space where people can come and feel included and feel important and hear, feel heard and feel like they can get information to take them from A to Z in the quickest way possible is, is brilliant. So Jay, I commend you. I wanna thank you for your time today, for allowing me to, to grace your show. This is just so phenomenal. And I'm just honored, honored to call you a friend. Well, as am I, thank you. And for all of you, Thank you so very much for watching. Thank you for listening. And would you do us a favor? Go ahead and subscribe, rate, leave us a review. Let us know what you thought of this particular episode. I am sure that there are plenty of takeaways, but we would love it if you would share one or two with us. And to enjoy more episodes and to learn how J. Shear Business Consulting can help your business, all you need to do is visit jshearbusinessconsulting.com. And until next time, keep learning, keep growing, connect with Dominique, and we will see you on the next Business Minds Coffee Chat. Take care. Jay. Jay Shear. Jay Shear. Jay Shear. Jay Shear. Business Consultant. Jay Shear. Jay Shear Business Consulting.